All right, so far for this project, we've created our rough storyboard, and then we learned how to do the actual animation process, the GIF animation process using Photoshop and using PhotoP and GIF Maker. And now we're ready to start making our final frames. And so we need to identify the assets we're gonna use, the character, the setting, and the events that are gonna happen. And we're always gonna start with our first keyframe, right? So my first keyframe has a blank kind of warm colored setting. And so I pulled that from some downloaded sources. And then I altered it a little bit using color balance. And I can even go further, like I might take this green, this is all our compositing knowledge, and extend this green halftone retro gradient over it, and then play with different blending modes to make it look even more retro. Something like soft light is nice. So something like that. And then I can merge them together just because I want to kind of simplify everything. But remember all of the compositing. I can rasterize it and then I can do soft erasing to blend my background. So even though they're taken from other people's pixels, I can still have a lot of individual control of what I do. So it might be nice to have it a little bit different in the middle there. Okay, so now if I like that background, I can decide to keep them as two separate layers. Why might that be useful in animating? Well, every once in a while, if I wanted to, I could flip it. So remember, assets are everything you can use. They're your treasure box of, of tricks that you can use for your animation frames. So maybe I flip this. And so sometimes we see it this way and sometimes we see it this way. And that will give just a subtle difference to the background. So if those are my background assets, what I want to do is put them all into a folder together. So I'm going to group all of these like we did with assignment two, like building the head separate from the body. I'm going to create a folder or a group. I'm going to call that back. Now in animation, these are called background plates because they used to be painted onto sheets of glass. And the background plates can be lit differently or changed differently in animation, in traditional animation. If you're going to have changes to your setting, like a sun coming up, clouds moving in, you're going to have a lot of assets that change your background. So don't be too quick to merge things together because all of these can be helpful. But my main character story, it's always good to keep your storyboard in mind is about not the setting, but the character itself. And so that's the, the next big asset I need to bring in. And that is my cutout PNG of my character. Now, my image resolution is much bigger than what was needed for an animation sequence. So it's going to automatically fill the native resolution I've set. Remember that that is eight by eight inches by 150 pixels per inch. And then I get to choose how I want the character to look in that setting. So I think I want them maybe a little bit smaller than this. So Command T. And then I definitely want to be able to edit them. So I'm going to rasterize it by right-clicking on the layer, say rasterize layer. 
And then I have to decide, do I want a shadow underneath them? Remember those compositing skills we learned for our proving ground? And I think, yes, absolutely, I want a shadow. But instead of putting it into this layer, let's build a new asset. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to fill it with middle gray. So edit fill, 50% gray. I'm going to set that to overlay. And then I am simply going to burn a shadow in using burning midtones at about 16%. Put a slight shadow under his tail and underneath the creature. Darkest directly underneath. And it's on its own layer, so if it is too abrupt, this is a nice trick for shadows too. Even though I'm using a soft brush, it can look really harsh. So I can always go to filter and go to Gaussian blur and blur it out a little bit. And then that'll be a softer shadow. Again, set it to overlay mode. And now I have a shadow asset that I can layer in or out on my frames. Even as my creature moves, it doesn't mean the shadow has to change but it might flicker a little bit just to be more interesting. I'll set it at about 70%. Is there anything else I think this frame needs? This color is mighty strong. So maybe I want to do a texture overlay that is a little less saturated. So this is reviewing a lot of our, our skills as compositing artists. So I can look up You know, using Pixabay, I can look up Misty Fog. Something like this. That's plenty big. going to bring it into my assets folder. Things I steal from, right? Going to stretch it, hold down shift to distort it. And I'm going to show you a very common compositing trick. I don't want this kind of floating island in the middle. So I'm going to use my lasso. I'm going to select around it. And because I'm just going for the texture, I am going to say edit fill that selection, not with 50% gray, not with black, not with white, but with something called content aware. This is a way you can use kind of clone stamp to fill something in. I want it to fill in at 100% normal. What it does is it samples from the textures outside of the selected area and uses that to fill in the selected area. So now no more castle there, right? Or no more floating island. Now I can take the opacity down and I can put that behind my creature. And I can play with different blending modes. I want to take a little bit of the saturation down. I kind of like what that does. I like what that does too. Let's try pin light. And I can even duplicate and use a few different blending modes. So maybe lighten and pin light. Yeah. Now these cloud assets, these can be moved as well. I could have frames where the clouds feel like they're moving a little bit. But in order to do that, I need to have what's called a panning screen of cloud. 
So let me duplicate it again, put it on normal mode at 100% and show you what a panning screen would look like. Panning screen is big. <laughs> so if you're gonna do panning shots, you have to kind of prepare that in your assets. And in order to do something big, I have to start by extending it. So I'm gonna stretch it using shift really long. like this. I have to hold down shift to distort it. I want to distort it. Okay, so this is now fog rolling through. And if I set that at a lower opacity and maybe set it to lighten. Now, whenever I change a frame, I'm gonna hit Control or Command T. And I'm just gonna move that panning shot of fog so that it can kind of roll across my image in each frame. It's going to be really subtle, but it will make a difference. It will feel more like film grain that way. So these are just all the different ways you can have assets. It doesn't need to be super subtle. I can make it so that this panning frame has changes in landscape behind it. You know, and that would make my character look like it's on roller skates or something. So just different ways we can build assets. So I'm gonna mark these red because I'm not gonna use these clouds too much. Okay. In fact, I'll just go ahead and, well, no, I'll keep it. Or maybe, let's see, I could do dissolve. And I could have that scroll through. Nope, it's not that effective. Let's do it up 40. Okay. So basically I did all of that to get to my first frame. So here's my first frame. I need all of these assets to build my first frame. So how do I move this into my animation? I need to take a photo of it. And this is really important. I need to merge those all onto one layer that then I can move into a new Photoshop file that I can run animation tests on. So this is how I do that. I go to my topmost visible layer. That's going to be my shadow overlay layer. And what I do is I hold down Option, and then I go to Layer, Merge Visible. Then I hit Command-A. So by clicking Command-A, I select All. I can also do it by just going to Select and All. Then I'm going to do Command-C, which copies everything in that layer, that full square, onto the clipboard. You can also do that under Edit, Copy, so Command-C. Then I'm going to say File New in Photoshop and open a file from my clipboard. And I'm going to call that file my stage. I create that file that's named my animation stage, not my assets. And I hit Command V, which is paste. And it's going to lock right into those proportions. And I have my first frame. So this is like the, the roll of film. 
with each finished frame, but my assets are where I build each frame. 